Okay, a couple of weeks ago, go out to my truck, battery's dead. So I gave it a jump, take it to O'Reilly's, they test the alternator and the voltage regulator, and obviously both are dead. So I swap them out, charge the batteries, drive, I don't know, a couple miles, battery light turns on. Sweet, okay, go and test the voltage regulator and the alternator, voltage regulator is bad change a voltage regulator, drive 50 miles, battery lights on. Go to another O'Reilly's that's 50 miles away, have them test it. Um, voltage regulator's toast, alternator's toast. So then I order, I replace the, I, I buy this one, which is to replace the new one I get, and I buy another voltage regulator. I make it home, and the next day I go around the block, battery light turns on, voltage regulator, change the voltage regulator from a different parts store. Um, and I make it another couple of minutes and turns out this alternator dies. It's producing plenty of voltage at like 10 or 11 amps now. So it's not doing its job. And the voltage regulator is brand new. The voltage regulator was fine, but I, it's just been such a pain in the ass that uh, I think I'm just going to swap it out to a 3G. So I've decided to read up some forums, and some very helpful people gave me some advice. And so here's how I'm going to do it. So here is the alternator that was recommended to purchase. It comes out of a 92. E350 Ford van with a 7.3 liter IDI. It's got your twin V pulley already. It's a 3G alternator. Has you know internally regulated. It's got the two holes for venting, so it's 160 amp. It's a direct bolt-on replacement alternator. And you can go to the um, you know pick and pull or some other place and and pick up a, a pigtail. But I just found this on eBay. It was recommended to me on that same forum. Um, 13 bucks shipped to my door. It saved me time and hassle from going to the pick and pull. But basically, so you have here, you have A, S, I. So A goes to your positive terminal. S goes to the, uh, I believe it's stator. It's right here. And then I is ignition, which is the green red wire on the voltage regulator. So you just splice that wire in, you're ready to rock. But the reason to do this is it's a much more reliable system, produces, I mean, 100 extra amps. Um, the company I bought this from was OBB uh, Alternators and Starters. I'll go grab the, uh, the test sheet that they sent with the alternator. Um, and it shows that they put it under load and they tested it and it's a good alternator. Uh, I'll show that to you in a second and show you the part number on this alternator as well so you can do it. Okay, so here's the sheet they sent me from OBB starters and alternators. Here's a part number. So you're going to need that 7756-3N-2G. That's your um, part number when you look it up online. Um, this is, you know, for that V-pulley and a, you know, 160 amp alternator. So, maximum output under full load, 169 amps, 14.05 volts. And it, so, it's, alternator should be perfect. So, it's really nice to have one of these sheets when you buy an alternator, because then you know that they've tested it, they've taken the time, unlike some other parts stores, to make sure that their stuff is functional. So this alternator cost, I think on their webpage, $111 shipped to my front door, which is, you know, perfect. The pigtail was $13, and then you're going to need a maxi fuse, which is, um, I think this was like another $15 or $20. Bucks. And that's really what you're going to need. I think the, you know, the, the replacement alternator from O'Reilly's was like $85, bucks, and the voltage regulator was 35 bucks so you're spending an extra 20 30 40 bucks i mean nothing in compared to having a reliable alternator that will function and not die every 
week. I think I forgot to explain. My truck is a 1988 Ford 7.3 liter IDI uh, with the ZF 5 speed. So, first thing, disconnect the positive terminals on the battery, uh, loosen up your brackets, take your belts off, and then move your alternator and disconnect your uh, all your electrical fittings. Okay, so here's the remanufactured alternator out of the truck. You have to swap pulleys when you get yours from O'Reilly's because they don't have that V pulley anymore. Um, here's your terminals, you know, your, your, your positive, your ground, your stator, all that good stuff. Um, this one will die without a, with, guarantee it. Um, but what's nice is you can see like this is how it sits in the truck. So your wires go along the back side of here and then you, you connect on the other side. So you have to connect all your, your electrical lines first and then put the alternator in. Whereas on this one, you've already got the pigtail on the right side of the, of the alternator. No need to clock the alternator at all. It's just ready to rock and roll. So I'll show you it installed in the truck. Okay, so here's the new alternator. Just it's in mock-up, there's nothing's tightened down, it's just to see fitment. I mean it literally is bolt in such an easy conversion. So you are gonna need, I think this is an eight millimeter um, bolt. Um, it's gotta be significantly longer. Your your old bolt is just is too big. So I stole it off my out of my pile of bolts. So here you go, here's your pigtail. Super easy to access. They give you a crimp on. I recommend you, you solder, and that's what I did. I just soldered a, an extension, because you're gonna need to cut it into your green and, and red wire there from your ignition. So you're gonna need to splice that in. Um, your power cable is on, you know, is on the easy side of the alternator to get to. So right now I'm just gonna Cut all the old stuff out of the harness, clean it up a little bit, get this wire spliced in, get this old um, voltage regulator returned, and return the other alternator. And I gotta mount the maxi fuse somewhere, or mega fuse as they call it, and you gotta take out, let's see, it's this line from your old alternator. So um, I'll show you that in steps. So, but this is just mock-up so you can see it fits amazing. All right. Okay, so I've opened up the harness um, from these two wires here for your tack. And if you unwire everything out of your conduit, you come here and you've got your tack and your green and red wire. Here's your voltage regulator. Here's your green and red wire that you're going to be splicing your wire off your pigtail. So you're going to cut that wire, and now you've got a positive wire. This comes off your original harness. Here's your positive wire. All right, follow that down, and that meets in with this yellow wire on your your um, voltage regulator. So once you disconnect that, which is here at this junction. This whole harness should come right out. I'll show you in a second. Okay, so here's the hot line from your alternator with, I believe, a fusible link. Yep. So the only wire left is your green and red wire. So now the whole harness should come apart. So you just, boom, cut that. Now your old voltage regulator and all that stuff comes out. Now all you need to do just take that green wire that you've got, splice it in with this wire from your pigtail, and wire up your hot lines, you know, your big hot lines, your four gauge wire from your alternator to your your mega fuse, and then, and then to your terminal here. Um, I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so here you go. Here's your tack with your ignition wire, your green and red, connected to that little splice that's connected to 
your pigtail. So now all your old wiring is out. Just throw in this, throw back it in the, throw it back into the conduit, and it should be. And then plug your tack back in. It should be ready to rock and roll. Okay, here you go. So now you got your tack and your red wire back into the conduit and back into the connector tucked it back in here super simple place it back in there it's like nothing ever happened here we go so now it's time to wire up the mega fuse all right got a four gauge wire from the power terminal and the alternator Everything looks great. Bolted in, nice and tight. I got my mega fuse back to the original power terminal. I'll start it up and see how it looks. The start of the truck, no battery light. Needles climbing still, truck still warming up. Looks great. There we go. Just wanted to thank everybody at uh, FordTrucks.com on the forum there and get me back on the road. This was a fantastic uh, write-up you guys left and and uh, it helped me, I mean it, it walked me through this installation. It was super easy. Totally appreciate it. Thank you guys.